Louise Gold is a performer of stage and screen who's worked extensively in British musical theatre and has been a recurring performer in various Muppet productions since the 1970s. And she's here with us just now. How are you doing? I'm doing really, really well. Good to see you and speak to you. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Now, you've done a few characters with the Muppets. For anyone that doesn't know, what are the characters that you're known for? Well, it depends how old you are. When <laughs> I first started out, I was Annie Sue Pig on The Muppet Show. And then I progressed. I did character, a character for, called Forgetter Fafner, the mm. ghost of Fafner Hall. I did characters called Raisin and Hortense in The Secret Life of Toys. Uh, I was one of the Skeksis in the original film, The Dark Crystal. And most recently, oh, there's so many I'll forget and someone <laughs> will be upset. Uh, uh, Fenella Furchester in The Furchester Hotel, which is on CBBS, and um, Age of Resistance, the new series on Netflix which I played my same Skeksis <laughs> yeah. and uh, some other characters in that. So yeah. quite a few things. Yeah, many things. So how did it all start for you? How did you first get into the acting side of things, first of all? Well, my mother was an actress. And mm. when I was about 10, I read there was a book called Ballet Shoes, which was oh. very popular when I was a little girl. And um, I wanted to be a ballet dancer. And my mother said, you're too tall. You're not going to be a ballet dancer. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Don't be an idiot. And um, cause she, <laughs> <laughs> But my mother was an actress. And yeah. I benefited from sort of sexism because she said, oh, I found there's this really nice school that you can go to when you're 11 that does dancing and acting and singing yeah. and if it doesn't work out you can always get married <laughs> and my brother would like want to also wanted to be an actor but he yeah. had to go to school and get proper um exams but because mm. i was a girl which is strange because yeah. my mother wasn't a stay at home i mean she did stay at home when we were little but she was also an actress yeah yeah that's interesting but, uh, yeah mm. so how did you first audition for the Muppet show in the first place because you'd kind of not really done puppetry before right? No I hadn't done any before mm. I uh it was just through my agent my mm. acting agent and I'd been in some musicals and at the time of my audition for the Muppets I was in touring in a musical called The Land of the Dinosaurs oh. where we it was a very tatty, wonderfully, wonderfully tatty, but lovely musical where yeah. we all went up the Amazon and found a dinosaur and brought it back to London. Oh. It sounds more glamorous than yeah. it was. Um, and I got this audition out of the blue mm. for The Muppet Show, which had, it was going out in this country, it just started going out. I had no idea what it was, anything about it. Mm. So I... This is the miracles of life yeah. that my agent said, you have to go to this audition. And I said, well, I've got a show. I can't yeah. go. There are no understudies. Mm. And she said, well, you have to ask. This is really, really important. I said, I can't even ask. <laughs> I don't have an understudy. Now, the, this show was directed um, by, oh, God, I'm getting old now. I can't remember I people's names. I see his face. Oh, dear God. Anyway, um, he'd worked with Joan Littlewood at the Theatre Royal Stratford East, mm. famously. And his view was, there's no understudies. Um, we'll make it up. The girl who plays your sister can take all your lines. Go. Mm. It'll be really good fun. Ken Hill. Sorry, yeah. Ken. <laughs> and um, so because I was in this weird show, he said, yeah, that'd be brilliant. We'll make it up and do it without you. So yeah. I was allowed to go to an audition for The Muppet Show because yeah. of Joan Littlewood and her mad theatre ideas. And I went and got a tryout and then yeah. got chosen to work with them and train with them. Yeah. I suppose it's kind of lucky that you joined at that time because if anybody tried to join the Muppets now that yeah. only had acting experience and no puppetry, they'd find it very hard. Well, actually, 
That's not necessarily true. I mean, when I joined and I said, I, I haven't done anything like this before, and they said, yeah. well, nobody has, we'll mm. teach you. But even now, there are people come to it from all different places. And yeah, yeah there are many more people who've trained and grown up with the Muppets. And most of the people yeah. I work with say, oh, I, you know, when I was a kid, I loved it. I, that's what I wanted to do. Mm. But... Um, in LA, there's a troupe that do a puppet up, yeah. which is an improvised puppet show. And some of them came from improv. Some of them were puppeteers who learnt improv, and some of them were improvisers. There's a wonderful woman called Colleen Smith who learnt to puppeteer uh, and came into the group from the other side. So it still yeah. happens. Yeah, I suppose so. So did you find it easy to learn puppetry? Because I suppose it's hard enough moving from stage to television. They're completely mm. different. But then mm. to have to act through your just your hand is even harder, right? I, I, I found it impossible. I, I yeah. really, it's taken me 40 years and I'm still... <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. I mean, it's it's so difficult. And in the beginning... I was just in awe of the performers, all the Muppet Show, Richard Hunt, Jerry Nelson, of course, Jim Henson and Frank Oz and Dave Goals, absolutely mm. extraordinary. But they're brilliant actors as well. They just act through puppets. Mm. But for me, it was really hard to transfer it to my hand because I wanted to do it myself. So I fought against it for years. Yeah. I mean, was, was it hard to kind of being used to being seen and being the star of the show to have to hide behind this puppet and the only thing that of you that people might recognise is the voice? Well, I think it was harder because I hadn't at that time been the star of the show. So I was yeah. still wanting to prove myself. You know, now I've yeah. done loads of theatre and I I don't feel so desperate. No, look at me, <laughs> look at me. Yeah. But then I was like, please, I'm really an actress, please. And I'd wear lots of makeup to do the puppeteering and, you know, because I, I wanted people to look at me and know that I could do it as well. So that was really difficult for me. Now I don't mind as much because I've done much more myself. Yeah. And as a lot of what the Muppets do as well is quite musical because of your background in being in musicals mm. did you find that part quite easy yes i found yeah. it um that was something and jim you know early on discovered that i could sing so i got wonderful musical numbers to do yeah. and i cannot believe it you know it was jack parnell and a full orchestra and every Monday we'd record the music and with these amazing stars and it was just the most joyous thing now you know this was at ATV Studios with this full orchestra now most of it's done on computer when we were doing <laughs> Furchester it was all sort of we recorded the songs for Furchester in one dressing room at the BBC <laughs> with blankets over a door and a computer Wow. But in those days, it was a full orchestra and it was incredible. It was just amazing. Yeah, I guess you don't really think about how much work goes into a TV show like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you mentioned that one of your first characters in The Muppet Show was Annie Sue Pig. How would you yes. describe her personality, first of all? Well, as I only realised... Now, she was, yeah. of course, me, very young, yeah. ambitious, singing. Before she, she thought she was more talented than she was. Yeah. There was a lot of that on The Muppet Show. Miss Piggy also yeah. thought she was more talented. So, But she was um, loved being there, you know, thrilled to bits to be part of it all. But, of course, that was me as well. <laughs> yeah. And was it quite early on that you were given your own character because you know a lot of the time people start mm. off assisting or doubling for people were you given a character quite quickly what i was given i i was assisting i was chickens yeah. i was a lot of background chickens which was just learning the very basic stuff of because um we work the the henson puppets all work with straight monitors this means nothing yeah. to people on the radio <laughs> But now, so it's not like a mirror. We we look at a monitor, 
to see the picture and know what we are doing with the puppet. Yeah. But it's the other way round from a mirror. So mm. it, to get your head around that is really confusing. So I would do lots of chickens in the background and I started off singing and then um, often my character would be solid in a hole so I'd just have to open the mouth but not move. Yeah. And I got more and more to do but it was a while before Annie Sue. She appeared, first of all, in the Leo Sayer show and she had a song and Frank Oz actually operated her for the song because that was oh. beyond my knowledge at that point. Yeah. So he did her for that and then I did the talking bits. Ah, interesting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so you were on the you were the only British puppeteer at the time as well, right? Yeah, so, yeah. did you feel maybe a little bit like the odd one out? Because I suppose there might be cultural differences there. Um, in some ways, I felt I'd come home. I think mm. I'm quite loud. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I sort of. And America, you know, one of the reasons I fitted in was because I had a sort of sensibility that maybe fitted in with these loud Americans. Mm. And they welcomed me in. And um, so I didn't really, you know, I mm. felt nervous because I was a bit younger and it was, you know, it was a big deal. But... I was welcomed in and Richard Hunt, who became my sort of best buddy there, yeah. you know, made me so welcome by shouting at me a lot and being very <laughs> rude to me. Um, yeah. That was his way of welcoming me in. You know, it was just brilliant. And Jim Henson, he loved, he enjoyed his work so much. And this as I've often said before, is the gift I learned from the Muppets. He worked incredibly hard, but he loved what he was doing and he never forgot it. There was never a moment where you felt he was going, oh my God, what have I got myself in for? In for? He, he mm. knew how lucky he was. He had his dream come true doing this job and he loved the people he worked with. And, you know, he, he shared so much um, the joy and, you know, all the... He, suddenly he'd come up and not earn money. You know, he'd been yeah. with his children. They hadn't had any money, but suddenly he was sharing the bounty of it with all of us. And it was joyous time. It was just fantastic Yeah, to be part of that team. Absolutely. And you mentioned Richard Hunt just there and mm. people like yeah. him and Jerry Nelson and Jim Henson yeah. don't yeah. really have the opportunity to speak for themselves anymore these days. No. So do you have any memories of them that you're able to share with us? Well, I have so many. I Jerry, I got to sing with a lot because mm. he was a great singer. and So we did many duets, which I loved. I loved singing with Jerry and... Um, he he was joyous and Richard, you know, Richard and I, Richard kind of adopted me like another sister, yeah. which meant he could be very rude. And he would never say that, he would say things like, um, you're coming on holiday with us because my sisters, it'll be really great for my sisters and my mother. Like, <laughs> almost like the unspoken, I hate you, but my, <laughs> my family will like you. But yeah. I think he did like me because we went on, you know, we did holidays together yeah. and um, travelled around together. And he was he was my big brother who was really obnoxious to me, but <laughs> I know loved me very much and I, I adored him. And Jerry equally, I loved Jerry. And Jim too, you know, yeah. I went on holidays with Jim and uh, wow. it, was, it was a very inclusive thing. Yeah. You know? How long were your holidays with Jim? Because in his biography, there were only like four days or something. Well, with the when, when I say holidays, the holiday yeah. I went on was an incredible holiday. It was uh, after Dark Crystal. Was it after mm. Dark Crystal? I think it was after Dark Crystal. Must have been. And he got given Lou Gray to have this yacht ah. that went to the south of France and... 
Um, Jim and his wife went, Jean-Pierre Amiel and his wife, who'd done the movement on some of the movement on Dark Crystal. Mm. Um, his secretary, Jill, who went to, I'll have to look at my photo album. <laughs> and we we went on this yacht around the south of France and it was absolutely incredible. It was amazing. Yeah. I mean, it must have been. That sounds amazing. It was a holiday. It was a holiday of a lifetime. Yeah, it was incredible. Yeah, and on the Muppet Show as well, every episode had a guest star on it. I yeah. mean, it must have just been amazing every week meeting yes. somebody new and being starstruck. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it was it was incredible. I mean, some of them, uh, the English crew were very funny because they often <laughs> like Steve Martin. We had on. Yeah. And nobody got him. People didn't know him at that time over here. And they'd stand around and go, well, it's not funny, is it? <laughs> What's funny about this man? He's he's, he's making blue... He's telling, not telling jokes. He's not funny. They didn't get it at all. But then, obviously, people like Bob Hope and mm. Rudolf Nureyev and Shirley Bassey and, I mean, inc- you know, a list of these incredible, incredible people. George Burns who I didn't then know who he was, but I've kind of researched just incredible people, absolutely incredible. Peter Sellers, um, Liza Minnelli, you know, incredible. Yeah, I guess, I mean, you mentioned George Burns there, but I guess it (laughs) maybe is a little bit awkward. Back in those days, when there wasn't the internet, if there was a guest star, (laughs) you'd never heard of them. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of a bit weird. Yeah. Well, Well, the English... As I say, a lot of the English crew were very funny. Yeah. Sort of, I remember why. Oh, I mean, they never get anyone. Why can't they get Matt Munro? <laughs> Somebody lovely like Matt Munro. And um, I can't think who the other ones were that they really got uppity about the crew because they didn't hadn't heard of them. <laughs> but I just loved it and sort of researched it once they'd been on. And I didn't know. I hadn't heard of Linda Ronstadt, I don't think. And I thought her voice, she had a voice like an angel. I loved her voice. So I sort of started getting all her records. And then I worked with her because I did the film of the Pirates of Penzance, which she was in. Mm, nice. And um, we worked together again. But I, I was just, you know, either people I knew that were huge stars or I found out, researched yeah. them. Yeah. And... Uh, one song that you performed on was one of the best songs, the rhyming song. And oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. One of your lyrics, I just, I don't really understand it. Is it, I left my knees in your car? I think if you're trying to understand, <laughs> but, I mean, do you understand the other lyrics of the rhyming song? <laughs> Not really. Well, I think you shouldn't try too hard. I think you should just enjoy it. Yes. Is the secret of the rhyming song. Because the whole idea is it doesn't rhyme yeah. and it's ridiculous. Yes. And that, in a way, is its charm. Yeah. Don't go, look, don't go looking for truth and motivation in that one, particularly. No. Well, you know, it's it's the most sentimental and meaningful of all Muppet songs, I feel. But... <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah. Now, the Muppets are very well known for the movies they've done over the years as well, which yes. you've worked on a few of them. You've yes, I have. mainly worked on the ones filmed in the UK. Is that just a choice to stay close to home for you? Uh, well, initially, because it's very hard to get English performers over to America. Yeah. Um, so... I wasn't involved in the first movie. And then the subsequent movies, um, the majority of them were done here. So, of course, a lot Mm. of the poor American performers didn't get to come over here. Mm. Uh, So I've been very, very lucky that Jim loved to work in England and really valued the craftsmen of the crew and everything. Um, You know, he loved working here. So I benefited from that. And... Also, I was always trying to leave and Jim, you know, because I wanted to do acting. But I was torn because I loved working with the Muppets and I loved my friends there. And, you know, I was leaving and then Jim said, oh, would you just come in and do Dark Crystal? And then 
would you do a little bit in uh, Labyrinth? And in Labyrinth, I was only in the bubble. I was actually a person <laughs> with a mask wow. in Labyrinth. So, um, you know, I was I was always trying to move away, but drawn back. And <laughs> before Jim died, he asked me to do Fafner Hall. I went out to New York and he said, would you do Fafner Hall? So, yeah. You know, I had such a love of all the people. I still do. You know, I'm I'm still working with them, and um, and love for Jim, and knew that, however much one half of me resisted, this was something special. You know, yeah. I, to as I look over what I've done with that com- with the company, I'm part of something so incredible and such incredible people. Yeah, absolutely. Did it feel like you were a part of history at the time or did you just not really know, I suppose? I Did it feel I was part of history? Hmm. One of the things that I'm only aware of now is that I, you know, by living this long and being part of so many projects and being lucky enough to now have created quite a lot of characters of my own. Yeah. I feel I have been part, you know, I feel I can't believe I've been part of this company and working for them for so many years and doing these projects. At the time, yeah. I was aware of how good everyone else was and yeah. what a tiny part. I wasn't in awe of people because it wasn't like that. But I I did look and think, well, they can do it, I can't. You know, yeah. Jim and Frank, watching them together do the double act of Kermit and Piggy or Kermit and Fozzy or on Sesame Street and just thinking, this is incredible. I can't yeah. do what these people do. This mm. is genius. And, you know, Dave Golds is still he's genius. They're geniuses. Yeah. So I am now prouder of my contribution um and i i would never have guessed when i was doing the muppet show that i would still be doing things yeah absolutely i guess maybe at the time i don't know if any of the performers would say think that they would be still doing it in 2021 but there you go i know know. it's incredible and the Muppet Christmas Carol, you worked on yes. a bit as well. Was that I the first did, project indeed. you worked on with the Muppets without Jim? Uh, yes. Yes, it was. And his son, Brian, directed it and, yeah. and and without Richard as well. So it was very, very... Well, they, they'd done some television yeah. stuff, but that was the first big project. And it it was... You know, Steve Whitmer did an amazing job with Kermit. What he did was beautiful. But it was very, very sad for us all. Yeah. But it's a wonderful film. Um, it's it's just a fantastic film. It's so lovely. And Michael Caine, he's one of the actors, you know, having worked with so many incredible actors, I was just... He was incredible. He led it and his commitment to it and you know it wasn't he wasn't doing the muppet christmas carol he was doing the christmas carol he was playing scrooge in the best film he could make it it wasn't a silly film and his performance is wonderful in it it's so moving yeah absolutely he was great yeah and is that you in the second line for the first song scrooge because and I think you're the only person I can think of who that is. I think it probably is. I'd have to yeah. go back now and listen to it again, but I'm certainly yeah. in there, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm there. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. And The Dark Crystal, you worked on back yes. in the 80s. Yes, I did indeed. Is that yeah. your first kind of non-Muppets puppet thing you did? Uh, what was that? I think it probably was yeah. i think it probably was uh that was before well i guess it was i just yeah. don't know now i have it's too long ago <laughs> i can't remember probably yes yeah 
Uh, so what was it like to work on that film? I guess because it's a probably it's still Jim directing and Frank yes. co-directing, but yes. I guess it's yes. a different vibe to the Muppets. Yes, I really enjoyed working on that because it it drew on sort of other acting things and the skexes, and yeah. I worked a, a little bit with the guys who were um, training, uh, not, not really, I mean, they were training to play the mis mystics and I went swimming with them a few times to try and get fit and be strong enough to do it. But um, yeah, it was, it was a whole load of other challenges and I enjoyed, although it was very tough physically because you were inside the Skeksis, um, that w I enjoyed it very much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you returned just a couple of years ago to do the yeah. Dark Crystal Age of Resistance. Was that yeah. fun to be back? It was such hard work, mm -hmm. um, but it was extraordinary to be back. And the because over the years there have been many times when they've thought of doing Dark Crystal sequels or whatever. Yeah. And for it to be done and i always thought oh well there'll be some cartoon you know <laughs> the youngsters will do it mm. i certainly won't be involved so to be involved and to have brian Froud there and lisa henson and for the puppets to be built by toby Froud, who yeah. was the baby in labyrinth and mm. um but is now an incredible puppet builder and he was working with his father and with wendy um and so for all those people to be involved and the respect and love for the original film, mm. and it really felt like it was an extension of that world. Yeah. And and so it was extraordinary. And all the, the puppet performers, I think I knew I'd work with all of them because it's a family, although most yeah. of them were younger than me. Um, We've all worked together over the years, and it was an extraordinary thing because most of them were British. Yeah. And um, it was an incredible thing, to, to the continuation, and also, again, to create new characters yeah. because we did have the original Skeksis, but most of the characters were brand new, so that yeah. was an amazing thing. Yeah, and with... I guess this is probably because Netflix has loads of money to afford these mm. people, but mm. in the Age of Resistance, a lot of the mm. characters were voiced by well-known yes. stars like yeah. Mark Hamill. I guess, yeah. was that... Yeah. Did you like that idea? Well, you know, they all did a, a brilliant job. It's weird because... And in the original film, they got outside yeah. people in to do the voices. And I absolutely understand why Netflix did that. But it's very hard because in Muppets, we all do our own voices. Yeah. And all the performers are actually very good actors and very good at voices. So it is frustrating when you, because hmm. for me particularly, being an actor... Part of my performance is the voice. Yeah. I am not just a puppeteer. So it is frustrating, but the people who came in did an amazing job. And I got to be Mordra Argot, who was one of my favourite characters, yeah. um, and do her voice, which was fantastic. And all the puppeteers did some voices. Yeah. Uh, but, but it's frustrating. But as I say, in the original, that was also the way that we, that most of the voices were brought in. Yeah, for sure. And you are a vital role in the television series Spitting Image, which was happening yes. around probably just after the Dark Crystal, as we think. Yeah. Um, yeah. How yes. did you first get involved in that? Well, Roger Law and Peter Fluck, who designed all the puppets, they had been doing um, three-dimensional uh, cartoons of political figures with plasticine mm. models. I think they were plasticine, I should know. <laughs> but anyway, they were three-dimensional models. And they had got involved with a producer called John Blair and they contacted me and said, you're the English Muppet, will you come and be our Jim Henson? 
-hmm. to which I said, are you out of your mind? Nobody is Jim Henson, and it certainly <laughs> isn't me. I, I'm not Jim Henson. Anyway, I got involved very early on, and we sat around my kitchen table in Queen's Crescent, uh, Kentish Town, mm -hmm. looking at uh, CVs to audition puppeteers yeah. and for the pilot. And so I was involved at a very, very early stage and we made a pilot and it got picked up. Ooh, and nice. so uh, I was involved in all the auditioning, the puppeteers and then training them. And uh, I mean, we had some puppeteers who were very experienced as well, who didn't need training, but yeah. trying to get them into the Muppet style. And initially the puppeteers were doing quite a lot of the voices yeah. And we were trying to do some of the voices live, but it was very difficult because of the size of the puppets. Yeah. And it was just physically impossible. And also to get people who did impressions. We had Chris Barry, who came in, and Steve Nallen, who came in as impressionists, and yeah. they learned to puppeteer. So they were coming in and learning to puppeteer. And then some of the puppeteers were doing voices. But more and more, it became more separate, the voices were done separately and the puppeteers were and as that happened I got less and less interested and yet again I was wanting to go off and do theatre and you know do my own thing yeah and you originally performed the Queen and That's right. did you do Margaret Thatcher as well before no Steve that Nallen? was Steve Nallen uh -huh. no Stephen Allen. I did The Queen. I did Mary Whitehouse. You you would not even know who that is because <laughs> you're too young. Um, Nancy Reagan, uh, Janet Street Germ, Janet Street Porter, who's still around, <laughs> um, and loads of characters. Uh, and then I worked some of the puppets with other people doing the voices. Uh, yeah. And of course, now it's back again. Oh, it's yeah. Image. I get, were you asked to? bring it back at all or did no i think they um had enough of me obviously yeah. <laughs> no yeah. i i mean i wouldn't really have wanted to go back in that way you know the muppet projects i've gone back in some way they're continuations they're going yeah. forward and and also spitting image the thing for me of not doing the voices yeah. i want to do the whole character and uh, I don't I don't think they're doing that now. I think yeah. they are doing, you know, impressionists and puppeteers. Yeah. And I suppose it's completely different characters as well, although the Queen's still there. But The Queen still <laughs> carries on. Yeah. And I have got, I still have one of the Queen puppets, of which there are oh, many. Oh, wow. She sits at home in a black plastic bag and comes out occasionally for special occasions. Ah, for speeches. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And did you work a little bit on Sesame Street as well for a little while? Yes. Yes. Yeah. I went out for about three years, and I did. I well, the Jerry Nelson was still alive then, so I worked yeah. with him and did duets with him. And Kevin Clash did did stuff with him, which was wonderful. Um, yeah. So I, I loved that, and I love, and I I had got asked to go out again, and I had a theatre job that came up, so I didn't. The last time I I turned it down, and then I think they thought, yeah. oh, she won't come out. <laughs> She's too busy doing her theatre stuff. Um, yeah. But I I loved doing stuff on Sesame Street, and then yeah. I've done other puppet non Muppet things um, to, with to, with Roland Rat for a little while. I was his girlfriend Ooh. for a while. Um, yeah. Roxanne Rat, because he had a he had um Glennis the guinea pig, I think was his girlfriend before Roxanne. <laughs> but he it does a little bit of mixing of uh, uh species. Yeah, which is commonplace in Muppets things, so <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well indeed it is. Yeah. So you're absolutely right. <laughs> and did Sesame Street kind of give you that experience in doing puppetry for kids so that for the Furchester Hotel, you were kind of used to it? No, not really. I mean, Sesame Street, one of the things that's so wonderful, although it is 
for children, yeah. it still has such a sophistication, mm. and it's very everything is very simple, and it's done at an incredible pace, and you don't have the luxury of the sets being built off the ground, which you did for the Muppet Show. So yeah. it's in some ways tougher and faster, but um, it's not. You know, in the same, you know, the Muppets is family entertainment. Yeah. It is not, oh, we must make it for children. It is family entertainment. And mm. Sesame Street obviously has very specifically educational um, aims and teaching children the alphabet and, you know, one of the songs far and near, you know, the songs yeah. were all designed to give some educational content, but very much in a light-hearted way. So, yeah, we of course we had Sesame Street characters, <laughs> Furchester Hotel, because Fenella Furchester was Elmo's aunt. Oh, really? I never knew that, yes. but I guess Family. it makes sense with her appearance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes. Okay, so that's an interesting thing. How did that series come about? Were they just looking for a kind of Sesame Street for the UK? Um, I am not entirely sure. I think, I think Kevin Clashman, I don't know who had the idea if he did, mm. but the, the sort of joint production and this hotel where you could have puppets coming to stay. Yeah. And of course the cookie monster was there yeah. and, um, we had guests of big bird and the count came to stay, which was fantastic. <laughs> To have oh, it yeah. there, um, and so the puppeteers Matt Vogel and um, Ryan Dillon was over with us most of the time doing Elmo, which yeah. was brilliant because he's an amazing puppeteer, fantastic, lovely, lovely man, and uh, David Rudman who now does Cookie mm. Monster. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And so not only are you known for your puppetry, but you've done loads of stage roles over the years in yeah. musicals yeah what are some of your favorite musicals that you've done well one that was joyous was a very silly show called nonsense that i did years ago because mm -hmm. i actually had to do a ventriloquist act with a non-puppet <laughs> and i got the job because of my experience with puppets yeah. and um that was fun that was very very silly uh I loved doing assassins at the Donmar warehouse because mm. it was black about um, the assassins that shot American presidents, yeah. um, a Stephen Sondheim uh, musical. You know what? I've done so many lovely shows and worked with so many lovely people. I did Fiddler on the Roof. Everything seems like last year, but, of course, this has been a rather weird yeah. long year. So it yeah. was... Whenever it was, it wasn't very long ago. It feels like it was yesterday, but I think it was quite. <laughs> yeah. um, it was before the year that didn't happen. Yeah, it was at least a year ago. That's for it sure. It was at least a year ago. Fiddler on the Roof. Yes, yes, yeah. which I loved. It was a wonderful production, um, and well, I've I've just been so lucky. I've done so many amazing jobs and worked with so mm. many amazing people. I, um, yeah, what a great answer that's interesting isn't it yeah. yeah they're all lovely people yeah yeah and you returned to the muppets in 2014 yes. for muppets yeah. most wanted and yes. I, you hadn't really worked with them that much for a no. few years before that was there yeah. any reason for that or was there just kind of no opportunities well i was doing a, i was doing a lot of theater stuff they would yeah. mainly in america i was i was busy and then um, they were doing Muppets Most Wanted here. So it was fantastic. I got to hang out with my pals and, you know, it was so lovely. I met all the new, newer yeah. team and Dave Goals was there and we laughed so much. <laughs> I love, love that man. We just spent time laughing and having yeah. a wonderful time. And then after that, uh, I worked on the sadly not very successful show, That Puppet Game Show, oh. which um, we did in the old Muppet studio. Oh, that really? was ATV, but is now the BBC. And um, it, it had great potential, but it didn't work, unfortunately. 
And it was a real shame because there were some very, very talented people involved, but it just didn't quite come together because, mm. you know, things don't always. Yeah. And you mentioned the new performers as well, working with yes. them. Yeah. Was it kind of, I don't know, weird to see these new people doing the characters or did you kind of, I guess, embrace the fact that the Muppets were continuing? Absolutely. You know, to yeah. see Dave still there doing Gonzo is, yeah. of course, just fantastic. And Steve was still doing Kermit. And yeah. Matt Vogel, um, uh, oh, God, oh, please. Um, all of them. Peter Lintz. Yeah. Uh, oh, oh, Ruffin. Oh, oh, <laughs> the Ruffin. Um, Bill Barretta. Um, Eric. Uh, Eric. Eric. <laughs> yes, I've my glasses on. Oh, these are pretend glasses and um, they're incredible they they are amazing puppeteers every one of yeah. them you know, they are um i think better technically yeah. than the original muppeteers they you know the original muppeteers are the souls of those characters they created those characters they gave them life they were the originals they are wonderful mm. but the the new generation are so talented they are so talented and they are a lovely team of performers they're just brilliant yeah yeah that's um, suppose that makes a lot of sense you know because when they first started doing these characters back in the yeah. day they were the first people to do it whereas these people yeah. have had their whole lives to prepare yeah, and they've been, you know, when I, I would talk, when we were doing Muppets Most Wanted, they'd say, yeah. oh, how did you come to be doing this? And they'd been, you know, training in their bedrooms. Because now, <laughs> and like we're talking over Zoom, you can set up a camera in your bedroom and do this stuff. I couldn't do that yeah. when we were doing the Muppet Show. The cameras were, you know, huge. You couldn't have one <laughs> sitting in your bedroom to set up and practice. So they've all been practicing for years and so so good yeah yeah absolutely and just this is just kind of one of these things that yeah. when you're about to interview someone you look yeah. at their imdp imdb page and just find interesting stuff you played a judge a couple of times in coronation street as well yeah. I, yeah. I mean yeah. is that something you enjoy doing just kind of taking up nice action roles it. like that i love it i mean that yeah. you know i went in for a couple of days but they were I, what surprised me about that because often when you go into something that is long running yeah they don't have any time for you they're so busy they're not horrible but they are <laughs> learning a huge amount of lines you know who are you you're the judge great well i don't have any you know the judge is sitting up there going silence in court they're not <laughs> really having scenes with them yeah they were so welcoming so friendly lovely and I was really grateful for that because it can be horrible going in just for a day. And yeah. um, and I did a, was it Holby, Holby City? Yes, that sounds familiar. Holby City, yeah, a few years back. And again, you know, they were just so lovely and friendly and welcoming. And um, as I say, sometimes I've done things and you think you really can't be bothered. You really <laughs> just haven't got the time. Not horrible. Just, yeah. it's, it's not, you know, you don't need to be friendly because you just don't have the time. Yeah. But anyway, on Coronation Street and Holby, they were lovely, absolutely lovely. Mm, yeah. And do you have any highlights uh, in your whole career that stand out to you? Well, one of my dream jobs, I took over... Um, many years in the, uh, ago in the West End from Elaine Page in a show mm. called Anything Goes. Yeah. And I loved that. I it, That was one of my dreams. It was at the um, Prince Edward Theatre where I've worked several times since. Mm. And I, you know, it was like being a little girl. I got to dress up in the most beautiful costumes all made for me, sing these fantastic songs with this orchestra, Cole Porter, um, in this wonderful production, and sadly it didn't last very long, yeah. but it, that was a dream come true. That was an absolute dream come true. And 
to work because I've worked now or um with Stephen Sondheim. I've done three of his shows, but he was mm. involved um very much. I did Merrily We Roll Along in Leicester mm. and he and George Firth who wrote it came out to Leicester and worked with us. And then on Assassins he was there working with this in Assassins. And he also when when I was one of the strippers in Gypsy, he was there he came down to Chichester to see it and uh, also in London. So, you know, to work with Stephen Sondheim and, and, you know, when we were in Leicester, I was going through um, bad times with my boyfriend and sobbing in tears. And they took me, he and George Firth took me out to dinner to the restaurant outside the theatre to sort of be kind to me and just... Yeah you know, to spend time with him and chat. Yeah, absolutely. Well, are you, do you have any future projects coming up at the moment? I mean, I don't know if things are no, certain. No, <laughs> no, I'm available. Oh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, um, I am, I am hopeful that things will, I, I was involved in the Gloop project, the Glorious Ladies mm. of Puppetry. Gloop, oh, yeah. sorry. Gloop, gloop, glop, <laughs> gloop, glop, um, which was a f really fun thing doing. We did it all around the world in lockdown on green screens. Mm. And Donna Kimball was involved and her husband, Rich Prince, who is an incredible editor, edited all these puppets together wow. from around the world. And it's incredible. It's on YouTube, glop. glop. Look it up. <laughs> and they're very short little episodes written mm. by wonderful Colleen Smith and with Alice Deneen and these incredible all-female uh, puppeteers. And um, it's an incredible thing. And what you when you watch it, you have to remember that no one was in the same room at the same time. Wow. It was all put together in editing. From that point of view alone, it is unbelievable. Yeah, wow. I have to watch that. Well, you do. And yeah. I was performing, um, a very good friend of mine, Mike Windsor, is Basil Brush, and he had a set up yeah. in his house. So I went round to his house and he was helping me film it. And we were doing it via Zoom with LA. For them, it was four <laughs> o'clock in the morning. Wow. So they were directing from LA on Zoom. It was yeah. unbelievable yeah. and wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, absolutely. Well, so, where are we able to keep up with you if we're interested in following you? I'm, I am on Twitter. Um, I don't know who I am on Twitter, <laughs> but I'm there. I think I'm... Oh, I don't know. I don't I think know. I'm a Twitter. Anna Louise Gold, perhaps. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for knowing everything I don't know. <laughs> um, I obviously don't know anything anymore. I thought I remembered things. Yeah. But I don't. It's getting sad. Yeah. This is a year of, of lockdown. Yes, exactly. Weird times. Yeah. But you're lucky you're still doing things. You're busy, busy. Yeah. Maybe, I don't know. Not really. Oh, yeah. you are. You're doing things. Right. Well, thank you very much for coming on the show today. Thank you. Pleasure. Lovely to talk to you.